Welcome to the Ripened Heart Podcast, where we explore the depths of the human psyche through the lens of homeopathy, human design, and astrology for soul-deep healing. Each episode will feature vulnerable and thought-provoking conversations, highlighting healing modalities that help us shift our perspective on what it means to be a healthy and fulfilled human being in today's world. I'm your host, Kaylee Anello. Let's dive into the podcast. Back to the Ripened Heart podcast. I'm here uh, with Krista Rivet, who is a classically trained homeopath, and she's also a heart math facilitator. And I just really wanted to um, bring back the subject of homeopathy on the podcast. It's a subject that I get a lot of questions about still. There's still a mystery around homeopathy where people can't quite grasp what exactly it is, how exactly it works. And I find that the best way to share homeopathy is through other people's stories. Um, Talking to people, I usually find that people find homeopathy because of their own chronic or acute health conditions or because they're a parent and they have a child that's sick and that doesn't respond to other methods of treatment. And so the story usually goes that they reluctantly and skeptically try homeopathy because maybe a friend suggested it or they have a colleague who is a homeopath. And then once they try it, they never go back and it kind of becomes an obsession. I know that definitely was the case for me. And I think that was the case for Krista as well. So Krista, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah, really excited to talk, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to get into your story today, but do you just want to give a little introduction about who you are and um, a little bit about your background? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm Krista and um, I am Canadian and I grew up in Kingston, Ontario and went to uh, university there and studied psychology and always had such a passion for health and nutrition and the mind and just that deeper knowing of more what's out there. And then, um, yeah, moved with my husband a little bit. Always wanted to go to medical school, but something didn't feel right. Um, and just timing, what have you. And, um, but yeah, we got married and I have four children and, um, we now live in Buffalo, just outside of Buffalo, New York. And I am now, um, a classical homeopath and, um, yeah, and obviously a lot in between <laughs> that's brought me to this to this place um, that we're going to get into. But um, yeah, and I, it's just I'm just such a strong advocate, I guess, for our own power. You know that homeopathy uses, which we're going to get into, and just looking so forward to, you know, sharing all this. Yeah. Wow. So my dad's side of the family all lives in Buffalo, so I'm super familiar. Oh. Okay. Uh, with Buffalo, New York. And yeah, I just, I love that. So there must have been something that um, kind of steered you in another direction if you were originally going to go to medical school. Um, so what was that kind of turning point for you? Yeah, you know, I, I don't really know. And again, now, knowing what I know, looking back, I feel I could figure it out. But in that moment, you know, you, there's just these feelings that come up. Um, and now you can see it all falls the way it's supposed to. But um, I think a lot of it, I struggled with anxiety too, and self doubt and fear of being myself, um, not really connecting to who I really was. And so kind of, it was very uncomfortable for me to kind of do, you know, to maybe do more. Um, so kind of hid, I felt myself in myself, if that makes sense, yeah. and stayed in the shadows and still, but just studied on my own after I graduated. And it just, I guess the timing too, was just more comfortable. My husband actually played um, professional hockey. So that's why we moved around and um, to support him. And, um, and then I always, always wanted to be a mom. Like I just knew, you know, without a doubt and being at home um, and being able to do that was, you know, a priority. But yeah, you know, yeah. I don't really know um, <laughs> the, the pull or the, you know, I don't really know, but I also, um, a book was given to me, I remember in um, university, um, Man's Search for Meaning, which is, I guess, 
dealing with anxiety all through that, like self-doubt, fear. Um, it just really was the catalyst for me to start thinking more. So I don't really know why I, I didn't do that, but I guess just trusting that feeling and, um, you know, and being in control of my response to what was happening. Cause sometimes I'd have regret or not regret, resent, I should say, you know, following being with my husband and supporting, but I wanted that, like just such a conflict. So I, you know, and then we got married and I had children and then that, I just didn't look back, you know, but with growing up with that still, again, always immersed myself in, you know, love books and yeah. health and um, not knowing homeopathy at all. Like I had never even heard of it, or I probably thought it was home remedies or, you know, <laughs> which a lot of people do. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until my son, my second child had chronic health issues um, that I started asking questions. And even then, like I was doing it, not knowing homeopathy, but doing what I was told and giving antibiotics, it was health, um, ear congestion and chronic uh, yeah. ear infections. And so it was just, you know, year after year, month after month, even just always bringing them to the doctor, another antibiotic. And, you know, and I just was, you just don't know any different, but I just knew in my inner gut, I'm like, oh, I just don't want to be doing this. It doesn't make sense. So, um, yeah, I would ask a questions and why is, is it, you know, why is his body making all this fluid? Like that was my question. And, um, the answer I did get was that's a million dollar question. And I was like, that kind of was a pivotal point for me. Cause I thought, okay, nobody knows, you know, these are the specialists. It was a top ear, nose, throat specialist where we live and not to discredit that at all. I completely value every profession and, you know, it's, but there was just more and yeah. that's what I thought. So I just kept digging and, you know, I wanted to know why his body was creating that, you know, what was off in him. And that, again, I don't really know how I found homeopathy. And I, I was listening to something not that long ago and it was, we don't find homeopathy. It finds us, yeah. you know? And I was like, you know, I kind of, because I guess my passion just brought me to that. And then I found a local homeopath here and yeah, that's where I just, I was amazed. So not that I didn't, I wasn't, well, I, not that I was skeptical. I was worried because, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, oh my gosh, what if I don't give this and I'm going to do more harm. But I just was like, I've got to give it a chance. And I, it was miraculous what I witnessed the change wow. in him. And so, yeah, that's pretty much how I found it. And then I was like, I need to know more, of course, you know, have to know as much as I can. And being that manifesting generator, which I know, you know, I was like, I need to know everything and um, <laughs> gathered as much as I could. And then actually found the school in Toronto, um, being Canadian, um, I applied there and here I am. <laughs> so what, what was his um, turnaround? Like how quickly did you see a result? So, well, so we, it was, uh, this was over like three, four years. So he started at the age of two with all this. And then the age of three, we had actually moved to California. Mm -hmm. And we were there and he started to get um, boils on his bum. And I was thinking, oh, it's just like a diaper rash, you know, not connecting anything, right? Like all separate yeah. issues and it ended up being MRSA, like MRSA, yeah. you know, boils. So of course, being in that moment at that time, not knowing homeopathy in my mind, I was very fearful and would read, 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 read like, oh my gosh, what is this? And so of course, fearing that outside germ, that bacteria, we were told to scrub, to disinfect, to clean everybody's nose because that's where it lives. So I was doing that. And it's like, how do I just, the fear was, it's just overpowering. And so we moved from there to Buffalo and that kept up the, the MRSA, the ear infections, everything. So this was like a three, four year period of me questioning, but still not knowing anymore. So then I was beating myself up because I'm like, I don't want to do this but I can't look at him and um, see him suffer. So I'm going to do what I, all I know at this moment. And so um, it was this last ear infection. That was the pivotal point. It was the MRSA. It was in his ear. So this was not a normal ear infection. The symptoms were very different than the past. So I brought him and they gave me all the stuff. And um, at the time I'd already found the homeopath. And so she told me, cause it was more of an acute thing in that moment. Mm -hmm. And she told me the remedy, um, it was chamomilla. And mm -hmm. so I gave it to him the night before bed. I didn't do anything that they gave me. And the next morning, the stuff coming up, like the discharge was stopped. 
and it didn't smell. There was an odor. The odor was gone and he was very irritable because if you know the remedy chamomilla, you know, <laughs> he was happy and I was, I could not believe it. So literally after one dose from the night to the next morning, three symptoms completely changed. So we repeated the dose again for a few days. And then 10 days later, I had to go get the checkup and I was so scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to look in that ear and what are they going to see? What if it's worse? Um, you know, I do share this very openly on my blog, but, and I'll never forget it. He's just like, oh, it looks wonderful. It's all cleared up. It looks great. And purely only on that homeopathic remedy. So that was the pivotal, like to see the difference, you know, to visibly see the ear different, to see his mood and his demeanor shift was profound. I was like, wow. And I'm like, this is what I'm, what I'm going to study. <laughs> I so, need to know more. Yeah. I'm curious because, you know, the homeopathic consultation is so different than any other consultation that, that people experience. And so I'm curious what your reaction to that was, you know, the homeopath yeah, and asking it's, it's all these funny. random questions and, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it's so funny because I still remember that first consultation um, because I didn't know, like I knew I read about homeopathy, but I still didn't understand it. You yeah. know, I was like, I don't get it because um, it's just, it's just so different than we're, but yeah, the questions she asked him in the office, um, well, obviously he was young, he was like four. So mm. obviously it's coming a lot from the parent, but um, like what kind of ice cream he liked or, you know, or what, you know, the uh, like foods and asking me about how he slept. And I'm like, what the heck does that have to do with this? You know, cause I didn't know, but exactly. And I'll never forget it because now I get it. Cause I'm asking those questions now. <laughs> and so I tell the clients, you know, especially with the kids, I'm like, you know, you probably are wondering why I'm asking this, but mm -hmm. most people that are coming under, they do have an understanding, but still it, it's so, it is, it's like, what yeah. the, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it can be so helpful to know those uh, random facts, especially in kids when, you know, you can't have a dialogue with them as much. You have to yeah. work a lot more on observations. Like I just uh, shadowed a patient this morning and um, I believe she's two years old. Um, and she had a very peculiar love of olive oil and vinegar oh, yes. and sauerkraut. And she even liked uh, Chinese bitters, like bitter herbs. Oh, interesting. Like she had a very developed palate and it was just fascinating. Um, you know, it was just such a, you know, peculiar thing to see in a small child. And so, yeah. you know, sometimes that's what leads you to the remedy. And because there's so many remedies for common ailments that kids experience, like in her case, it was some digestion issues and, and some um, anxiety and fear. Um, and so it's just fascinating how, you know, when you find the substance homeopathically that resonates with that person, even those little peculiar things, it'll match. It's like, oh yeah, you know, in the picture of this remedy, they love vinegary foods and you yeah. know, it's kind of like well, a confirmation, it. you know? And it's always the most peculiar, right? That exactly. leads you really to the right one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it because, um, and as you know, the, the psychological aspect is the most important, um, mm -hmm. asking to get the essence, you know? And I guess that's what I share. I'm like the essence of who they are with the essence of the remedy. Because like you said, I think that's, the confusing part like how many times do we get the question what do I take for this you know for a fever yeah. or and that's it even in an acute situation which is why it deters people because it's like I just give me something quick like we're in an age of quick fixes but once you learn it it's just you you can't go back and it's so miraculous but yeah the breakdown of just small subtleties are like which are the biggest things for us <laughs> um yeah. yeah make all the difference yeah that leads me to a couple of questions First being how you describe homeopathy for anybody who's still unsure about what it even is, and also why you chose classical homeopathy over other versions of homeopathy. Yeah, I mean, good questions. Um, I guess, so homeopathy, yeah, I always almost start to prefer to explain what it's not because yeah, go for it. I think it gives like people, I feel, interchange naturopath or naturopathy with homeopathy, I, I find. They think it's the same because I'll get so many people like, oh no, I already tried homeopathy. And then they tell me what they did and it's herbs and it's yeah. like IV, you know, um, things. And I'm like, no, no, that's not homeopathic then. 
So yeah, it's not the same thing as naturopathy. Um, you know, it's not herbs, it's home remedies, I think is the biggest misconception because of the word home, mm -hmm. but really homo is similar. So it's like, here's like where that come from, where that comes from. But um, yeah, so when you kind of don't, when you know it's not that, it's like, well, then what is it? <laughs> yeah. And I find all those things still come at from the outside, you know, like focusing on symptoms. They're just natural, mm -hmm. you know, substances doing so. So it doesn't that much differ from, I find allopathy, you know, but um, homeopathy is such um, an individualized um remedy that matches the essence of who you are um, that stimulates that internal wisdom that we have like our bodies know how to heal yeah. like and I use always the example like a scab you know even like you cut what you get a cut what happens your body produces the proper cells to clot it it you know then a few days later it puts a covering over it like it's just like wow and that's something so simple so our bodies know how to heal and so homeopathy is stimulating that wisdom inside to, you know, harmonize again, or because illness always comes from a disharmony or an imbalance or, you know, a mistunement or disruption. Um, and so that remedy that is so individually picked for you, you know, stimulates that to create harmony. So then your body follows, um, you know, that healing process. And I always use the word catalyst. I, you know, I, I feel that helps too. It's like, it just ignites ourselves on the inside or it's the catalyst for the healing that you already know how to do. So it's a very different, it's true healing from within, like literally stimulating inside versus looking at the symptom as the problem. The symptom is just the expression of that, that mistunement, that deeper disruption. So to come at it from the outside, you know, with a medication or even something natural, um, you know, herbs, what have you, which are wonderful, it's still not as deep, you know, and I think everything yes. could be synergistic, like nutrition obviously is important. Um, some like minerals, vitamins, herbs, all of that can be wonderful, but it's still more on the physical body, you know, whereas this is such a level deeper than anything is what, how I see it. You know, it's just that deepest level of healing you can get. Yeah, I, I love how you put that because even with as wonderful as herbs and supplements and all of these things are, what I find is that just through my own observations and observations in the people around me is they'll heal one thing and it's kind of like playing whack-a-mole where it'll just start expressing yeah. itself in a different way, even maybe in um, mental symptoms instead of a, a stomach ache or, you know, it's, it's like you, you support the body, but it's still there at some level. And yeah. all it takes is maybe a bit of stress to kind of bring it out again. So it's like, we are supporting the body with some natural remedies, but there's a reason, there's a really deep, deep rooted reason that that symptom is expressing itself. And that's why it's like, you you kind of take the, the guessing game out of it with homeopathy. It's not like you necessarily even need to know exactly what is wrong with the person as in like a clinical diagnosis. You're more just looking at the picture that they're presenting you of, of symptoms mm -hmm. and habits and um, you know, the mental picture and everything. And so I found that really refreshing about homeopathy where you don't always have to know the why, you know, why, do, why does this happen? You know, what is it? Is it um, too much uh, bad bacteria in the gut? Is it this? Is it that? Because there are, there are a million reasons why we may feel sick in our modern era, you know, toxins in the air and mm -hmm. EMFs. And so it can be, it can feel like a never ending rabbit hole. Whereas homeopathy is just like, I'm just going to support you and heal you regardless of what actually is causing it. Absolutely. And that's so important. And yeah, um, because that's it. I also feel like we connect the dots. Like you just said, mm -hmm. you're, you know, support. Absolutely. Like thyroid, for an example, it's so prevalent. And mm -hmm. so of course we nourish the thyroid with herbs, supplements, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's, going that much deeper, why is that thyroid off in the first place? So I guess like hair loss, for an example, irritability, it, you know, you go find out, oh, my thyroid's off. Right. So it's like a hierarchy. So you start from the outside of all the symptoms and then you find out what's causing those symptoms, a thyroid that's not working properly. So then you just start nourishing that or managing it or controlling it to make that thyroid work. 
but that's homeopathy goes that much deeper as to why is that thyroid like what is making the thyroid not function properly there's an energy source that's feeding the thyroid to create that like to make that organ do its job and so that's the level homeopathy so it's yeah it is like a step deeper and you're Mm -hmm. connecting the dots so all those symptoms like you said you might take things that that certainly will have an effect and and are wonderful but it's just not the same level so that would be the difference um yeah you're taking and then you might be taking all these herbs and supplements you know five different things Whereas the homeopathy, it's one remedy, you know, that will bound, like become restore harmony, I guess, so deep within that that thyroid will function better, that which affects your mood and your hair and your, you know, everything, but then everything else going on. So that's, and I guess that's somewhat explaining classical homeopathy at the same time. It's one remedy, you know, connecting the dots, literally looking at the whole of all the symptoms, the essence of who you are. Um, and choosing one remedy um, at a time and a very, you know, minimal dose and gentle, you know, being so gentle and just nudging that, you know, your life force, um, which is what we use in homeopathy, that keeps your body running, you know, that term, the vital force, your life force, um, that's creating your, your body to, to function it's being nourished and supported um, by one remedy. And yeah, I just, it's just so beautiful. It's such a nice supportive healing modality. Yeah. And so that kind of brings me to the, the other question, because I feel like, okay, once people understand that it's not home remedies, it's not naturopathy, they're like, okay, I understand what this homeopathy thing is. But then I find that people then associate it with homeopathic protocols. Some call it practical mm-hmm. homeopathy. Some call it Banerjee protocols where it's like, okay, if you have hay fever, take this combination of homeopathic remedies and it's kind of a one size fits all still. And there's yeah. definitely merit um, in that. And it does work for people. Some people it doesn't work for. I, I personally didn't work for me. That's kind of what I did for a long time before I um, worked with my homeopath um, who I'm mentoring with. And so I'm curious why you decided to go the classical homeopathy route. Yeah. And again, it just made sense to me. And yeah, like you said, I'm familiar and they have definitely their place and it can be very effective. Um, but it's almost taking an allopathic approach, right? Like the one size fits all and we are not the same. And so it's just that much fine tuning and Mm -hmm. it's more time consuming, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's much more effective. And just looking at the person as an individual with all the parts, you know, and what's running that, um, running your parts in your body. um, You know, I just choose just assessing with those principles just makes sense to me. you know, and again, yeah, those combination remedies, which you see for allergies and all that, you know, I have them in my home and we use them and it's all homeopathic, but it's like a crapshoot. It's like, you know, there's something, one of these remedies is going to stick. Let's just throw it, you know, let's throw 10 at them. And, and, and that's essentially what's happening. And that's the beauty of homeopathy. There's no side effects. Mm -hmm. So even though the one remedy, or there might be maybe two that are going to help your hay fever and your runny eyes, um, the rest, you know, just aren't going to do anything. And so, you know, protocols and all that are based on that too, you know, that's kind of what's worked best in the masses and it might not work for you, but it might, you know, um, (laughs) but then you're getting into, you know, I guess not, yeah, just the fine tuning and the individuality of, you know, of homeopathy and the remedy and and why it's so effective, Um, which again leads, I guess you could start why people sometimes you know, turn it away because they go, and that's the problem. They go to the, the store and they pick up a remedy that says, oh, heartburn or, you know, gas or something. And they take it and they're like, well, that didn't work yeah. <laughs> because there's probably, you know, there's 25 that may be for that because you have to look at you as a whole and your individuality and um, find that one remedy that, you know, will cover all of it, not just the heartburn. Um, I remember seeing this video. I think this was like I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago, it was like this uh, joke video that had gone viral of somebody going to, you know, the pharmacy and getting um, homeopathy for insomnia. And they were like, I'm going to prove right now that homeopathy doesn't work. I'm going to take this whole bottle 
and nothing's going to (laughs) happen. And sure enough, of course, nothing happened because, you know, again, there's this misconception. It's, It's not like other forms of medicine where the dose, like you can like overdose on it by mm-hmm. taking a whole bottle. It's like one pellet is going to stimulate the response. You can take one pellet or 50 pellets. It, it doesn't matter. You're not going to have a different effect. And yeah. that's very specific to homeopathy because you're taking the energetic imprint of something. It's a completely different way of working with the body and of, of stimulating the healing responses. You so eloquently put it. Um, and it's just, you know, so many studies are coming out about how our bodies are electromagnetic, we're energetic beings, and that doesn't have to be like a spiritual stance. I think that people see it that way is like, oh, you know, people who are spiritual or have a certain philosophy um, are going to see people as energetic beings, but it's like, no, we literally are. <laughs> yeah. oh, we have an electromagnetic field, which, you know, you study in, in heart math. I'm, I'm vaguely, vaguely familiar with that. Um, yeah. And so I just think it's, it's a different way of viewing health. And it's like, okay, and that's why you have to find the remedy that fits you is because it has to resonate with your field. It has to resonate with your symptom picture. And that is the beauty of it and the frustration of it. Exactly. <laughs> is, you know, sometimes yeah. you can take a few remedies to really find one that's going to stick, like you were saying, even when you're seeing a classical homeopath that really digs deep and finds all the clues and puts them together and asks you a bunch of questions and gets to know you as a person, it's it still may take a couple of sessions to really yeah. narrow in because people have so many complex layers to them. There's so much. And really we're just finding the common thread in your story about who you are as a person and your past and maybe even, you know, family history and um, all of that comes into the picture. And so, yeah, it's just, it's why I love it though. (laughs) And so um, I'm curious, can you walk us through a little bit about what it's like to see a classical homeopath, like what that session looks like and what you do for people? Yeah. Um, So obviously, you know, we, I always offer, you know, we talk at first to explain because a lot of times people aren't sure, but they're, they're pulled to it somehow. Mm -hmm. So we speak a little bit and then in the actual consult, um, you know, it's usually an hour to, to an hour and a half. I find sometimes longer, sometimes less, you know, it all, again, it's so individual. Um, but yeah, a deep history of obviously physical, most people are coming for physical symptoms, but that's really, you know, not the, the really important thing, you know, you know, the hierarchy of what we I'm trying to pull out is your mental, emotional, you know, the, um, the essence of who you are and everything about you. So we go deep and it starts, you know, from, from birth, or if it's a child, even when they're in utero with the, mm-hmm. with the mother, when they're pregnant with that child. Um, Because like you said, the energetic imprint of the being, like of the mother and and what the child is absorbing or or even the adult case taking from when they were a child. So it's, we start right from a young age and go through and um, a lot of times it's, it's, well, it's always led by the client. And it's amazing because a lot of times, and I know I felt this because I see a homeopath when I'm done. And when they're done, it's like a therapy session because it's almost like as they're, you know, um, divulging all this information, they start to see maybe connections, you know, at times in their life. And that's the most beautiful when they are aware of that. So I have one, you know, many, well, many cases it comes to light, you know, at the time of skin eruptions, for an example, and, oh, it's been for two years. So it's like, well, what was going on two years ago? And a lot of times there's a, a disrupt in the family, like a divorce or a start of a new school or, um, you know, there's, all, there's something. Um, but yeah, it, and it's so fascinating. So we're going, you kind of get led by the client. And obviously our, my job is to pull out, you know, um, the, the information that's helping me to match the essence of them to the right remedy that, like you said, will resonate the best. And um, so, yeah, it's a very thorough, um, you know, mental, emotional, past traumas, like all these things stick in your body, you know, at an energetic level, which creates those physical symptoms of expression. So it's such a complex, deep, um, 
you know, um, analysis, I guess, and, and intake and observations. Um, and then after that, you know, that's, that's the job is to match. And like you said, it can be a process because it's almost sometimes in that moment, what's being presented and what's given a remedy. And then a few weeks later, or, you know, six weeks later, the follow-up, you know, a little bit was done. It's like a layer was peeled and, you know, they're like, well, I'm still not sleeping well, but, oh, I had energy today or my skin was better. Or my bowel movements are better or, you know, and so then you reassess. So then I reassess at that moment with what work has been done or, and perhaps maybe nothing was changed or everything was changed. So that's the importance of follow-ups are so, so important because oh, yeah. we're ever changing and it's not, you know, you're not giving something within five minutes and off you go, you know, you're not managing, you're uprooting, you're healing and that takes time. And um, yeah, patience, commitment. And that's so important to know too in consultations, you know, most people that are seeking homeopathy do understand that mm -hmm. um, it's a process and it takes time. Like you didn't get something, you know, chronic illness doesn't happen overnight. So, you know, and, and we're such in a world right now of living from the outside in, you know, just quick fixes and you know, believing our health is on the outside of us and the symptoms are the problem. And so it's just, like you said, it's lack of understanding or, or just not knowing more, you know, we don't have a full picture of how our bodies function. And I guess that's to explain homeopathy and what happens too is understanding how we function and how powerful we are within us that we've just never been taught, but yet we know that, but then we're kind of you know, led astray. <laughs> and then we lose that sense of um, power within us and that healing ability. So yeah, so in a consultation, it's, um, you know, we come out at the end and um, the goal is to not see them again. <laughs> you know, I don't want them to come back. So and a lot of times, um, you know, they'll reach out when needed. Yeah. So they'll, you know, they'll have great success. They're feeling great. And then they kind of know, you know, that remedy, they'll take it, you know, like you said, too, a stress that comes up or trauma in their lives or an illness, like an acute illness, sometimes, you know, you need a little reset, another nudge from within, because sometimes you relapse a little. So then you take that remedy and it, and it boosts you from within and, and it creates that um, resilience. And um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's great to get those rewarding stories when no follow-up is needed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have, do you have a favorite case that comes to mind that really just solidify like oh wow like I'm, I'm doing what I'm, I'm meant to be doing yeah yeah I mean it's it's so rewarding um and even I get I mean there's so many it's hard, really hard to choose <laughs> um I mean the most visible ones are like acute you know because mm -hmm. if it's if you choose that right one and a lot of them are easy to learn like arnica for an example mm -hmm. and I had shared recently my daughter hit me with in the head with a golf club mm -hmm. and it was it was bad and I was like whoa like kind of saw stars um, you know, a little, I had to go get some staples in my scalp. Um, but the bruising on my cheek, it kind of was on the left side of my cheekbone and into like just above my temple. Thankfully it was, uh, you know, not right there, but the bruising, I could feel it. So right away I ran and got my Arnica and I took a very high potency, um, but it started to swell. It looked like a golf ball was in my cheek. Like mm -hmm. it was within five minutes. So I took Ar Arnica and I, could not believe it. Like even me, I'm like, wow, because you know, it's not often I, I need to do something like that, mm. but it was down and within 15 minutes, like wow. I could not. Yeah. I mean, of course the body is going to do what it does. I, I still had pain and um, over the next you know week, but the healing, how quickly it, it, it happened and how quickly the whole thing resolved to me, I was like, wow, you know, this is, it's so cool. Yeah. So those acute things that you can visibly see and feel within minutes is, 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 yeah, it's like magical. Um, but chronic cases. Um, yeah. One, I have one, it's a young girl, um, you know, a, a teenager and she was seeking help for um, juvenile arthritis in her knee. So that was the problem. And of course it started uh, like four years prior and swelling, pain, had injections, had draining on, you know, just that whole cycle mm -hmm. that it would get better and it wouldn't and all that. So they came to me as the mother and her and um, 
so yeah, I took the case. So again, they come for the knee, but of course mm -hmm. I'm diving in and asking and they're probably like, um, you know, a better menstrual cycle and um, all these things, her mood and what she likes and doesn't like. And so I came up with the remedy um, and sure enough, it was maybe two weeks, maybe about three weeks later, her mom emailed me and said, oh my gosh, she's been pain free. She goes, she's never had this like thank you, you know, and it's just like, oh, it was so amazing. And so we followed up, it's been about six months now. So that's how quickly, you know, it, she started to feel a difference. Um, so then we consulted more, um, you know, ongoing, like I said, and um, other things were coming up like the mood and, you know, um, mm -hmm. some anxiety and all that. So I retook the case um, and prescribed a different remedy actually. And the, again emailed and it was even better <laughs> she's like oh because her knee started to hurt again a little bit at the same time as the moodiness and all this stuff so I retook the whole case and reassessed and again it was probably three to four weeks later oh like sleeping better we have it's no swelling she's not limping anymore she's standing at work all day she's a cashier no pain it was beautiful um, and then this was the best, this is the best part. So of course they don't, a lot of times clients don't offer information because they don't see the connection. So I'm asking all about the history of, you know, I said, well, how's your, have you had blood taken? Cause she was always anemic and she goes, yeah, I did. She goes, yeah, my blood levels were fine. I'm not anemic anymore. So that was really cool because I, so I, they didn't even see that, you know, and I said, and the remedy that was part of the remedy picture. So the right resonate, the resonance, like you said, her whole, she's like, cause she's been tired, but she's like, but my, my iron levels are fine. They went up from the previous blood work. So that alone, like that case was great because you're coming for a physical, you know, um, issue or so it looks, but there's so much more to the picture and the mental emotional improved too. She had, wasn't as moody, her sleep was better. So it's just the all around improvement, which is beautiful. And it's just so beautiful to see. So that was very rewarding. Wow. That's amazing. And yeah. you know, I love that she told you about her lab test too. Cause I, I think, um, that's so fascinating to see. I've seen that myself, um, in, in patients that, that I've shadowed and friends who have taken, um, homeopathic remedies where all of a sudden, you know, their hormones, hormones are balanced, yeah. even though they came for skin issues or exactly. You know, and that's, like, it just shows yeah. how it's all connected, which is why we dig so deep because yeah. we want to see the whole picture. And that is what's fascinating too about um, homeopathy is the first thing that usually improves is the demeanor. So like yeah. a little more pep in your step, a little less irritable, um, a little less sad, maybe happier and, you know, more easygoing. And then the physical start to go away too. But like you were saying, also, there's a lot of layers to people too. And, you know, I feel like from just what I've witnessed, it's it's such a blessing when that deeper layer comes through that you didn't see before in a prior session. Because like in the case of the teenager you were talking about, then you get an even more bang on remedy. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's more it. And, it. yeah, it's amazing. And actually I have another case I was just thinking about as a young girl, I think age six, um, who had chronic, they brought her for years, even to a specialist thinking she had a UTI. Mm -hmm. She'd be constantly going to the bathroom or saying it hurt, you know, and wanting to like, felt like, you know, she had uncontrollable urge to go and, and urine was dripping. And so obviously, you know, they're specializing in on that. Mm -hmm. So she came to me and of course we see that as, you know, a, a symptom of something bigger. And after taking the case, um, you know, along with all the other things, um, the mood, she was very, very, um, almost like, um, had, OCD tendencies, like would only wear one thing and was, wouldn't look at people. So they came to me for that physical issue, but the whole mental picture of that was obviously that weighted the most, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and had tendencies of, um, you know, just with social things, like kind of that would always concern them and not affectionate. And so I chose the remedy, gave it to her, um, and things got a little worse. She went to the bathroom more and actually had a little tantrum. So again, I was like, oh, that's beautiful because that's actually a great sign that her, she's been stimulated maybe a little too much, but that means it's being, it's moving, you know, that healing ability is moving in the right direction where is she starting to. So we left it and sure enough, um, and this was a quick case, you know, I only had one follow-up, um, 
you know, in between we had a few emails and stuff just, you know, which I love because that's mm-hmm. so important. I'm like, please email and, you know, so I know anything that changes the subtle things. But she, the biggest thing was after about four weeks, she goes, she's a different child. This was the email. She's like, she's not even the same girl anymore. She's looking at me. She's engaging with the adults. She's hugging me. And she doesn't have those tantrums anymore. And she hasn't been wanting to go to the bathroom. So there was nothing physically because they, they went through all the specialists. And I always make sure that too, like obviously have you checked to make sure it isn't an infection and, you know, all the, and that, that's why they got stuck. You know, and that's usually like you said, people end up like, I'm, what do we do? (laughs) And so they found uh, homeopathy, but yeah, that was truly amazing because now, and I haven't heard back. So, which is a great sign. Um, yeah. yeah, So, yeah, I don't know all the healing, like the, the eye contact improved her affection, um, not, you know, able to change the clothes, like just, it was just, it's so amazing. Um, yeah. So obviously that rooted mental, emotional, you know, that shift, like you said, is, is what we want. And then the physical body will follow. Yeah. And, you know, in homeopathy, we often call it somebody's state, you know, the the state Mm -hmm. they tend to be in, that's just, um, not the, the highest expression of who they are. And Mm -hmm. so I just, that's what I find so beautiful about homeopathy and so special about it is because it touches the whole person it's going to transform that person's life, maybe in ways mm-hmm. that they didn't expect when they walked into your office. You mm-hmm. know, like um, if it's an adult, say, you know, maybe they'll finally go after their dreams, or maybe they'll finally um, have the confidence to do something that they wouldn't have normally done, and it quite literally mm-hmm. changed the course of their lives. You know, and they they start to really express themselves from an authentic place, and. Yeah then, you know, the, the physical healing is just a side effect of that. It kind of gives you a different perspective on why the body expresses symptoms in the first place that we don't often appreciate or think about in, um, the everyday, you know, medical model. Yeah, no, you're right. And that's, I think, understanding how we work, that we are more, you know, when we are in tune to ourselves and, and we're, you know, in alignment and, and, Um, the physical body will heal. And that's exactly homeopathy. You know, it understands that that is the case, that we're not just our parts. (laughs) And, you know, there is something connecting all those parts that work, you know, together. And yeah, it's truly amazing. And the perception shifts, like you said, Um, it's another case actually, which I don't even know if this person is aware of it, but I see it. Um, you know, she had come for grief, she lost a father and um, long term grief and just somewhat depression and um, not sleeping. So she said she didn't feel the same grief The the anniversary came around of the death. And she's like, I just she goes, I felt I was able to handle it, like it was all going to be okay. So that was uh, amazing, because that's the first step. And then of course, her sleep improved and what have you. But she was also an artist, and she just never had that zest to paint again you know she hadn't done it in a while and then I never really heard from her but I see I know now she's painting like crazy like you know and and um diving in and that was her passion and so even sometimes you're not but like you said it's like that um you know that something was stuck or it, mm-hmm. you know it was able to move through and now she's doing what she's passionate about and able to live and, and perceptions are shifted and um so yeah, like just seeing things that sometimes they're not even aware of, but yeah. they're acting differently or they're, you know, the same situation might be happening, but they just aren't reacting how they used to, mm-hmm. you know, but because they can't physically maybe see something that's changed, you know, it's, um, there's just so much to the picture, but yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, we, we both um, have backgrounds in psychology. So I'm often thinking mm-hmm. about how remedies we can see that they touch the subconscious mind um, Mm -hmm. because often, you know, we'll see their dreams shift with remedies say, and that's really when we have the most access to our subconscious mind is when we're sleeping. We're not, you know, in that mental state where we're in that, you know, active conscious mind. And so I just saw this in a uh, patient I observed um, earlier this week where um, she had three dreams back to back where she reconciled with people from her past that she had been estranged from. Oh, and it was just so beautiful to see. And, and it was people that 
you know, sometimes that she expected that, you know, had obviously left her with some pain and grief, having lost that relationship. But then it was other people where she hadn't been aware of how much it, the the breakup of the relationship had bothered her mm-hmm. until she had the dream. And she was like, oh, I, I, <laughs> I didn't expect to dream about this person, but it was just like, you know, one dream like that is remarkable, but then to have three with three separate yeah. individuals, you just know that something deep is taking place in that person. And I, I just find that so, so, so fascinating. It's just like Absolutely. on the inside, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around and you just have to appreciate it and kind of almost just stand in the mystery of it. You know, something yeah. like homeopathy can't be easily explained even for homeopaths. You know, we don't a- actually know what, what, you know, the remedy is exactly going to do. Like you didn't know that she was going to start painting again. You know what I mean? You just don't yeah. know. Or a lot of times is that release of um, like emotion crying, you know, it's so common and we equate that with not good. I'm like, that's good in so many cases too. And I love my, a lot of my favorite cases are mental health, Mm -hmm. which obviously there's always something physical that comes along. A lot of times it's, you know, um, gut issues, Mm -hmm. but um, uh, with therapy, I love the conjunction of, you know, the, the synergistic, I guess, outcome if, with therapy and homeopathy because sometimes you know you go to therapy and with so many people I mean I have traumas and past things that they're working through and you have the awareness but sometimes it's just you can't get past something and I find the right remedy exactly it, tra- like it stimulates that healing or that stuck energy to move um, that's been stuck that our minds have suppressed but our bodies are holding on to it literally helps move that. So it's like you're lighter and you're more aware. And then that therapy will be even more beneficial because you're in a better place to receive it, to maybe see it, even though you want to, but you just, you're not in that state. Um, And same with any, you know, modality, any type of thing. Sometimes when you, you know, you're in a better place to, to be able to absorb or use that, um, awareness yeah. knowledge um, or other modality yeah it kind of brings to mind um the last episode i had with lydia joy who works in mineral balancing mm-hmm. and this is something that's always fascinated me about that is that what mineral balancing practitioners will see is that when they support the body with um, nutrition and minerals the same thing tends to happen where people tend to have emotional releases and so there's something about supporting the, the body's natural innate ability to heal. You know, in homeopathy, we call it the vital force. Mm-hmm. It's like the body needs energy. It needs to feel safe enough to go through that. Otherwise, it will kind of wall it off from you and suppress it. You know, maybe that's just what we were taught to do, or maybe um, we're too busy or we don't want to see it or whatever the case may be. But I just find it interesting. There's something about supporting the body. Um, you know, and that's why a lot of times, you know, a healthy diet and lifestyle goes well with homeopathy, just like therapy goes with homeopathy. There's just something about the body feeling safe enough to release. Um, And sometimes it requires the physical materials to do that. And I feel like homeopathic remedies that you're, you're kind of being held by that remedy. And it's like, it's like, it's supporting you emotionally and physically enough where it's like, okay, now I can actually go through the process of processing this completely out instead of processing it in little bits and pieces, like maybe when something triggers it or a memory comes up and you cry a little bit, but it's still there. It's like, no, I'm going to have a full release now. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's several full releases, you know, there's no exact rhyme or reason or rule with this, but yeah, it's just, there's something about that supportive mechanism that actually gets to the root of it and completely uproots it um once and for all and yeah usually a dream will come with it or something where there's like wow I I can think of that person and not cry you know yeah or even you know stress we say we blame the outside right oh Mm -hmm. that situation that stressed me or you made me mad Mm -hmm. and no when you have the awareness that you are like you are owning your reaction but we don't a lot of people don't have that awareness that they can regulate that 
they don't have the tools they've never been taught or they don't know and it's just quick and easy to blame and honk your horn and move on and blame the outside world right mm -hmm. but when you are aligned and that's where actually with the heart math we you talked about electromagnetic force yeah. and our hearts literally that's what it is right electromagnetic field and energetic that's keeping our physical body running and you can regulate that like that people it emits about I think up to six feet out from us our frequency so our emotions are encoded you know in that electromagnetic field and mm -hmm. so that's what people feel around you and so I love the combination of that when you regulate your heart the heart rate variability that affects your health and your organs as well and then the mental component um, you know it's like you're off to the races it's like a clean mm -hmm. pathway between your heart and your mind and you you see the power that you have over your response and you can regulate that response so it's never what's outside of you it's never that person you know it's how are you choosing to respond and you can't really choose if you don't have you know maybe some tools or awareness so i guess that's um you know my passion is too to just to that we can you know um self-regulate and homeopathy the right remedy just helps that so much um to shift that awareness and and be calm in a situation that you might not otherwise be, um, you know, or, or stressed or crying or feeling no energy, then all of a sudden, you know, you feel I can do this. Um, it's it's truly amazing. Yeah, and that field that you were talking about that the heart emits, that kind of makes sense to me now. You know, when you know most homeopaths they come into it because they're pretty energetically sensitive. They can kind of feel other people's energy whether you want to call an empath or just open or intuitive whatever but it kind of makes sense now how a patient can like walk in to a follow-up and you just know they're better like you can feel it yeah interesting it's funny. you feel that they're not because <laughs> I help my my family of course and my son I've helped you know and um I could feel I've given them remedies, you know, I assess them and give them a constitutional remedy and I can see, you know, at times of stress or anxiety, they're withdrawn. And it, I just said this the other day to my husband, it's so fascinating. And I gave him his remedy and it was maybe a day or two after he would not stop talking in the car on the way home. <laughs> and normally it's just quiet. <laughs> it's like, how was your day? Good. You know, and he was talking his whole energy was different. And they're not, and that's where you can see it because they don't, he doesn't, he just opens his mouth and lets me give him his pellets and off we go. And so, yeah, you observe and I could feel it. And that's the power of when you shift your internal, um, you know, life or your vital force, the people around you change, you know, and you can feel when he's changed inside, I could feel that. And so that's where we all, you know, you literally do have to start with yourself to change, you know, because people pick up on that and that mm -hmm. affects what comes your way. And I mean, we could get, that's a whole other topic, I think, but oh, um, a great topic, though. <laughs> yeah. And so that's where homeopathy, like the power within you literally affects the world around you. Mm -hmm. um, and homeopathy is, 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 a, is a medicine that helps shift. I guess that's what I love. It's an actual medicine that that heals your body physically and energetically and mental emotionally. And then when you cultivate other tools, you know, to self-regulate your heart and um, you know, you, you just strengthen that, that vital force, that electromagnetic field. And that's, you know, less susceptibility <laughs> to illness and other energies around you. And um, so, yeah, it's just that awareness that you, you know, we have all that right inside of us. It's, it's truly amazing. And now, you know, after all these years, you know, it's finally, I have, I, I, you know, meeting the right people. I love the synchronicities that happen and just to keep educating because we need it more now than ever, you know, to tap into our internal power, um, just not for our own healing, physical healing, but for our life, you know, our life healing and our experiences instead of we live from the outside in, you know, when we heal from the inside in, that's what we're talking, or from the outside in, and we live, you know, like just always trying to change the outside to make our inside better. And it's just, we wow. got it all wrong, you know? <laughs> Gosh, that so, we, it, so much. Yeah. I've, I've been thinking about that a lot recently because there's so much in the external reality that's just so beyond our control. Mm -hmm. and it's so uncomfortable, you know, because it feels like everything's changing, maybe for the better, for yeah. the worse depending on your perspective. 
And so it's just so empowering that by changing you, by changing your internal field, by, you know, help helping just support your body yeah. that it can bring you a lot more peace with whatever is going on in the external. And so, you know, you stop projecting onto the external and making a bad situation even worse, you know, and yeah. just having, having that peace is everything because then you're not constantly reacting and stressing and, you know, your well, that's it. quality yeah. of life is so much better. Yeah. It's, it's, it's action and response versus reacting and, um, surrender, you know, and being able to trust. And when you, you know, tap into your own power, you begin to trust yourself and you trust mm -hmm. the experiences unfolding around you. And there's no fighting, there's no resisting. And we're just so taught to attack, fight, yeah. risk. Like, I don't like those words, you know, and it comes to, I just hear it all the time on the radio, the battle, the battle against a certain disease or the battle against, mm -hmm. and it really, really, I don't agree because you're fighting. And instead of not that you want it to happen. And I mean, I don't know how much time we have, but I didn't even go into my younger son was diagnosed with an extremely rare form of cancer. Yeah. And so that's really where my pivotal change began um, yeah. because I grew up, even after my older son, I still had, you know, fearful thoughts and worry about health and, you know, not healthy. I didn't, I wasn't happy. I wasn't thriving. Um, and then when this happened, this diagnosis, you could imagine like it was shocking. And so homeopathy, was so profound. Um, aconitum was the one I went to right away and Ignatia um, for those acute, that acute shock and the acute, like, oh my gosh, you know, you think the worst and is terrified. Um, but through the treatment, I learned the art, I, I, art came through me of surrender and, em and embracing. And I actually, I was angry. I was resentful, all these things. I was scared because I didn't want to do what we were supposed to do. I didn't agree in that battle and that fight. I'm like, but his body grew this. Mm. So we have to get it out. Absolutely. But yeah. then it's like, what is going on? Like what? And it's a mystery. And again, like you said earlier in our conversation, we don't need to know why, you know, I don't even need to know a diagnosis really, because we're going to treat him and boost exactly. his ability you know, along with some other things, um, which we did, and it was profound, but my healing that occurred through surrender and acceptance, like I embraced it. And we actually began to love going down to the hospital. We'd fight over it. It was almost like a little getaway because we'd have to go stay for five days and we would, because we mm -hmm. have um, four children. So we had three other kids at home. So the whole thing really, really was a learn, like it was a lesson. And I am so grateful for that now, which so that was my pivotal point because it, I saw it as like a fear. What, why is this happening to me? And then that shift of something, um, just at all, almost everything I learned, like marinated, it just came through me. And I'm like, I'm, it is what it is and let's go for it. And what am I going to learn from this? And it, it actually made me dive in. I finished my studies, beautiful things came out of it. He's resilient. He's taught me so much. I believe our children choose us and come to us and teach us, which that could be another whole conversation, <laughs> but um, so many learning things. So really obstacles, there are none, you know, and that really showed me that. So moving forward, that was six years ago now that my life has shifted since I began to surrender, you know, and right now it, it's, um, it's trying, it's hard because you kind of accepting what is. And when you trust yourself, you, you do trust the process and, um, I have homeopathy so I can support in those times where I need it for my family, for myself, for clients, um, on top of the, you know, individualized constitutional care. There are, like you said, states or times that you might just need a little layer or more an acute approach on top of your constitutional, you know? Um, but yeah, so that really surrendering, I guess, and accepting and living from within and not battling and fighting. And, you know, we just look at illness with, as a battle and yeah, you need to true. heal and support. And it's such a negative narrative that's put out there in life, like everything, like fight for that job and, mm -hmm. you know, um, keep going, don't give up and try and try. And everyone thinks that's like, I'm strong, it's strength. And you're really not, it's coming from a place of fear of what if it doesn't happen? instead of working, coming from a place of alignment, allowing it to happen and the, what it will come to you. 
you know, rather than trying to change that outside and trying to change that diagnosis and battle it and fight it, like embrace it. And it's like reward system versus punishment, you know, it's like two different angles and what's going to be more effective. And unfortunately right now, you know, we're coming at it as a battle and the negative and the fear versus boosting health and, and boosting the goodness and, um, drawing towards peace versus running away from the fear. Like there's a difference, you know, where, you know, the resistance versus acceptance. And um, yeah, so again, I'm sure we could keep going and a whole other uh, podcast topic, but. Wow. I'm just so struck by that. Honestly. I mean, so your, your son is diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. And I mean, that's the biggest surrendering, you know, yeah. is, is it's so easy, you know, I, I can only assume I can't speak from experience, but it would have been so easy for you to just curl up in a ball and understandably so, and just shut it out and not face yeah. it and, you know, go more into fear and more into anxiety. And instead you, you chose to see it as a lesson and as something that was going to um, almost bring about a, a healing, you know, not only. It really them, did. It, you, it was. Everybody involved. Yeah. Yeah. And it really was, um, you know, just the strength, like I said, and the timing, um, you know, again, looking back, you know, in that moment, it's like, I can't believe it's been six years. I'm like, how the heck did we, but in that moment, I did obviously, I'm a researcher at heart and had to know everything. And I reached out, I found other mothers, I found, you know, I, I, I mean, that's what you do. <laughs> um, other modalities, I did it all. And, you know, and again, I mean, this, we can keep going on all these side branches, but again, with his nutrition, I was so focused. He can't eat that. He can't eat this and no starches. And, you know, cause I started, I was learning everything about, um, I took a cancer nutrition course on top of all the, like a holistic cancer course. Um, but then I sat back and it kind of hit me too. I'm like, but he's going to be miserable. He's six. He, he yeah. might, he wants to have some cookies. So yeah. that's the power of our mental emotional. I'm like, I could have deprived him and did, you know, all those textbook things about starving cancer and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm like, but he'll be miserable. He, you know, I'm like, he needs to be happy. His soul, he needs to feel safe and, um, you know, taken care of. And, and it was just stressful. And I'm like, so I, I let that, and not that it's so important. I mean, I did, obviously I, you know, I would do bone broth and bone marrow and all these other things. And a lot of supplements, of course, to, to keep his uh, physical body strong, but homeopathy was the big, big thing. And for me and our family and him. And, um, but yeah, I let that go. And that surrender of just trusting, I trust it no matter what the outcome was, even if it wasn't going to be a good one with him, I felt at peace and I just trusted that everything. I just, I don't know, came through me, over me. Um, and obviously he's thriving today. He's great. Um, Your intuition kicked into high gear. Yeah. And just the, the power gave, I was so much stronger because I surrendered, you know, to what was happening with trust, you know, from myself and the universe and the situation and mm -hmm. um, yeah. And just like, and he was happy, you know, we didn't, we weren't strict on the diet. We weren't, you know, it's just, we were just like, let's just do what we're going to do. And uh, yeah. that's it. Yeah. So he, uh, he's doing great today. Oh, I'm so, so happy to hear that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that powerful story. I mean, yeah, we're definitely going to have to have you back on just because I know I feel like oh, now I have all these things I want to <laughs> talk about. I love it. I love it. Um, and I want to ask you this to end. Um, so because, you know, you're such a book lover, I'm, I was hoping that you could give us your top three books that you recommend. Oh, for yeah. I mean, I was actually just going to talk about one, one that really, well, the first one was, I, I kind of mentioned it was um, the Viktor Frankl, um, the one I was given that really, you know, changed my path of thinking about our, the power we have to choose our response, regardless of the outside situation, man's search for meaning. Um, so that was like pivotal for me. And I was like 18 or 19 or something, but I, I always, it just stuck with me, not knowing that I might need it. So now in hindsight, I wasn't struggling with anything, but now I look back and that book really, that mindset that it, it, you know, shifted in me, um, was powerful. Um, power for, versus force is one of my favorites. It's on my um, shelf. I actually got it because of you. I haven't read it oh, yet. Oh, it's my favorite. Like, it's very deep, but it's one of my favorites because it's just, 
I just love it. I mean, that one comes to me. It's just, yeah, I recommend that for sure. Um, Cause that's the battle, you know, the power versus force, the whole resistance. And it, it's, I think you'll love that. Um, gosh, there's so many, I feel like I want to say four because there's two I'm thinking of. Go for it. <laughs> Biology of belief by Bruce Lipton. That's a great oh, yeah. one too. Well, actually now I just thought of a five. <laughs> um, that one's great. And I find that's great for a lot of people that are maybe just learning, you know, because he puts some case studies in there and um, yeah, he's great. it's wonderful. It's a beautiful book. He's great. Um, Dying to be me by Anita Morjani. Wow. I have that on my bookshelf too. About oh, cool. so, awesome. so that one I devoured in the hospital stay with my son. So my homeopath at the time had given me that actually. So that really, I read it, I think in an hour or two hours, cause we're there all day, every day. And so that one stuck with me and it's one I always refer to people because it's just a story like how she writes it, but there's all of the documentation and her healing from basically not going to make it within an hour to fully recovering. Like it's, it's a miraculous story. So that one I love. And then the other one is, is actually more homeopathic, but the science of homeopathy. I feel yeah. like that's one of my faves. <laughs> yeah. Who, who's that by? Oh, George Galukas. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not, I don't know if you're not in homeopathy, people might not, but it has the science, like, I, I love that one too. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I know when I get off, I'll think of 10 more books. <laughs> <laughs> For the next episode, you can bring us your, your part two of book recommendations. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. I yeah. Know. You were the person who um, turned me on to German new medicine too, which I think is. Oh, really that's right. Yeah. So I know we, yeah. could, we could literally, that's what I'm saying. There's so many branches yeah. that essentially come down, but that connection of, um, yeah, the emotions and trauma mm -hmm. connection with specific body parts and, and cancers is, is very interesting. Yeah. Well, where can people find you, Krista? Yeah, you can visit me. It's just kristarive.com. On, on the web and at Krista Rive on Instagram. And um, on Facebook, I have a page, Krista Rive Homeopathy. And I apologize because I completely mispronounced your last name. At the oh, beginning. I know, but everybody hey, does. Hey, so. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did too. When I first met my husband, I called him Rivet, but it's oh. Rive. <laughs> well, I will yeah. put all of that information down below as well as the book recommendations. And just thank you so, so much for your vulnerability, for sharing today. I just, I absolutely loved it. So thank you so much. Oh, good. Well, thank you. I loved it too. Awesome. Well, we'll have you back on soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye.